Hello, my name is Greg, otherwise known as New Journeys Far. I did a video of this game last night, and I was fairly drunk when I did it, so I didn't really like how I did it. I mean, answering phone calls and then the abrupt end, and I don't, I don't think it was fair to the authors who made this game for me to have kept the video in its current format. Now this video is still probably going to be like 20 minutes to a half hour. I'll probably give it the benefit of a half hour because again, I was drinking last night and I should be ashamed of myself for for not putting more thought into what I was doing. Anyway, so uh, this game was made by Linnaeus, I believe that's his uh, username, and from what I've gathered from the author, I thought it was made by, it was a triple project, it is, but what I've gathered from the author is that the the quest started out as his work, but now he's, uh, I'll correct, I apologize if I'm wrong, I may have not misunderstood, but what I'm gathering is that the, the this uh, two other authors, which is Avataro and Davy Awesome, and they're pretty much uh, have joined in to help out Linnaeus with this project. So yeah, what originally uh, attracted me to this project is because I wanted to try a few group projects, but I, I didn't realize that it was it was originally started by well, it's a group project now, and I'm very excited to see how this quest goes. I played for a bit. Now, uh, I've I've seen things that I liked. And I've seen things that I did not like, and I will be covering them in this video as I go. So let's begin. This is the peaceful land of Parul. But Like I said last night, before I continue, this music here, this tune, this MIDI, I love it. This, is, this MIDI here is actually a remake of the title screen. Uh, it's a remastered version of the title screen of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. And uh, I used it myself in one of my quests, Souls of Wisdom 1, or just playing Souls of Wisdom, whatever you want to call it. And in the Sky Temple, in the Sky area, I used it as the temple music. And I thought it was really, I thought it really hit home. And uh, so yes, I really love this tune. So let's continue. This is is the peaceful land of Hyrule. Once long ago, it was a war-torn nightmare. Due to the machinations of the evil, the king of evil, Ganon. However, a legendary hero appeared to challenge the monstrous Tarn and save Hyrule. The land has once again entered into a time of great prosperity. Yes, the great goddesses has smiled upon us for all this time, but a dark wind blows. Something about that reminds me of Magus from Chrono Trigger. Ah, the dark wind blows. I feel like Lavos is going to come out after me now. It may soon be time for a young man who so resembles the legendary hero to save Hyrule. But, could a simple janitor for a local temple really carry the spirit of a legendary hero who has protected Hyrule since ancient times? Now last time, last time I did this, I had trouble figuring out what to do, and then this happened. Oh no! Uh, okay. Well, I don't know what it, something happened there. I think I, when I pressed the button, something happened there, and I think I opened up the map. So for that D map, I'd probably recommend disabling the map because what it did is open up a void square. It almost looked like I was playing some game from Atari for a second there. So, because that screen is blank, yes, it's best to disable the map for that D-map. Now, I'm gonna go in here. Happy birthday, nephew! Wow, you're the same age as the legendary hero. Speaking of which, Amy came by. They need you at the temple right away. While you're at it, pick up some radishes on your way home, yeah? <laughs> I would rather this red ruby. Now, first time I played, I went just straight up. But, there's something over here that I have not seen. Happy birthday, young man! This is so remind me of Fallout 3 right away. It's like, happy birthday! Everyone's celebrating, and then, like, there's, uh... 
I, I think I, I could insult an old lady and eat up a few kids or something. Or, oh, I don't know what I used to do. I want to do in that game now. And shoot a cockroach or something. That was awesome. You're so present. Just don't tell your uncle. Tell me, uncle just... Wait, she's... N don't tell me, uncle. She's not allowed to give me a present? <laughs> That's a bad uncle. He I think I've been spoiling you. Spoiling me on my birthday? My god, old woman. Uh, go away from me. You're creepy. Now... This video will probably only be a half an hour, and uh, we're just going to look here. Welcome! There have been bad omens as of late. Young man, you seem to possess the spirit of the legendary hero, but there is only one way to be sure on this, your 18th birthday. Well, they don't look very 18 in these, like, an 8-bit, 8-bit generation graphic, whatever. Anyways. But uh again he could be any age too as well. So that's and usually his late teenage years, of course eighteen are usually the most popular age that you would see in into the Zelda branches. It was including Lord Green of Time, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. But now I don't know if it was exactly the eight. But I remember now the silliest thing, I remember when I first started playing Ocarina of Time, I was what? I was at the age, just a little bit older than Young Link. I was like, look at this big adult Link. Now look at me now, like, adult Link looks like a kid to me now. Anyways, this is the first, this is short. I fear malvolent forces will soon be here. Go forth and be tested by the galaxies. But, be warned, though this is a test, the people and the situations you face are very real. Do not take this lightly, or, or many will suffer. Yeah, uh, well, when I record these videos, I find uh, I I prefer to actually play it in play it like as I see in the uh, 640 by 480F format. Uh, screen size for it, because that's how they were able to appear when watching on YouTube. But I think that's the most appropriate size of the video to be on. Three of Ganon's followers have been kidnapped. Well, three of Ganon's followers have been kidnapped. What was it? Three of Ganon's followers have kidnapped Prince and Zelda. Each of them stole a piece of the Tribe Force as well. Nora stole the Tribe Force of Courage. Nido stole the Tribe Force of Power. And Uranal Stole the Triforce of Wisdom. The three of them are attempting to revive Ganon. You must stop them and rescue Princess Zelda. That is something I definitely should do. You received a hero's bundle from the old woman. That's cool, cutting three arms at one time. The scripting in this game is pretty impressive. It is, uh, and probably not too impressive, but in fact, I, I don't know. I need to figure out how to do that because I have parts where I have to. It, Fixate my cutscene in a certain way so that you receive the three items separately without even knowing. But uh, these guys here got, uh, got something figured out where you can receive three items at the exact same time. Why well, I, I I could use that for my quest. I admit that. And a book of magic for those with the potential of using powerful spells. So I'm going to assume I have that potential. None shall pass without the Swords of Balance from the Nine Temples. That's very nice. So this here must be the final level. Or, oops, I'm sorry, or something. Uh... Okay. Now, this here... See, I did this one last night. This here... This whole checkered format of the ground. I, I I pretty much made a joke about it last night. I got to make a joke about it. It reminds me of a golf course because that's what that's kind of what a golf course is like in the past. They they have this checkered layout to it. The some uh, some is, some grass is cut a little bit thicker than others. I have to give credit to the lawnmower, the lawnmower who uh, decorated the front of that temple. 
Now I'm gonna try going where you I haven't been last time. I haven't been last time. I know where characters and villages. I also know about this path. But I do have to make a complaint about it after before this video is done. It, I probably was just exaggerating by looking at it, but there's, there's an unfairness of that spot, and I will tell you exactly what it is I'm going to go right now. And while I'm going there, I'm going to I'm going to address some other complaints because say he, he did. He, he said that he uh, the, the author said that he would use some of my complaints as like a framework. Uh, of, of reference to be able to make, make those improvements. Now, while the quest has some really neat ideas on it, I find the lack of attention to detail is is, is downright something. Uh, it's something that should be looked at because I feel like the overworld is. I feel that the mountain regions are just walls, while the trees are just placed there, like. Like, let's take the screen for example. Five trees, a rock wall, and a boomerang. A scene of old grass. I'm pretty sure this graphics pack has grass, talls, or anything to make details. I'm sure that you could make, like, shape the ground and all that. But what I'm seeing is. I feel like I'm in an empty world of trees and octorocks. That's pretty much what I said last night. A little bit of water there. Now, that may sound very bad, like, but. It's. Uh, but, I think if I had to make any criticism uh, in this game as a whole, uh, above all things, well, I think the ideas and I think the, the, the author is onto something. But, like, the, like the trees here, like, we have a straight line of tree, 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 tree trees. Okay, I, I had trouble with saying that, it's almost like a tongue twister. And one tree just below it, it almost looks like, it almost, now this looks all natural, by the way, and just, the, the, that's where I'll leave it there. I'm pretty sure I've got my point out there. So I'll continue. Now I like these freaky looking mask octopus. I do. They, they they freak me out. I I, I do. I do. But they, they're pretty they're pretty interesting and they're clearly more powerful than their average octopus. It could be just the masks that they are wearing. Which also leads me to my second place, Enemy Placement. And, uh, I'll show you the part that where really bugs me the most. Oh yeah, I just had to see that. That's cool, I don't even have that in my place, so like the final bar. But this is where that bugs me the most. I haven't been this way because I never bring it out. Why is the enemy, why is this, why is there so... This is an ambush. I have little room to walk. And this whole screen just feels like an ambush. I, I feel like I cannot do anything on the screen but get hit, despite my challenge. It's it, it's other words, the screen feels like it was designed for me to just take damage. As you can see, I had no prayer there. Chances are I could still probably get through, but it's not a more it's not the most fun experience. Now that's that's most of my complaints out of the way. Other other than the way the world is designed and the town is the same, it just looks like just a few couple random houses placed in a square village with no detail whatsoever. So yeah, so uh, Linnaeus or the other two is helping Linnaeus. I uh, really focus a lot of my attention doing whatever you can to. I don't know what the risk game is like as for detail, but I know these first few screens really, really put they put me on a wrong uh, no no they put me on a a different kind of impression. But again, that's something that could easily be fixed because take Soulsism 2, the one I'm in right now. There are some screens that don't even look like rooms at all. Like I just I just in my own like, some of my side, skew, uh, side view screens just looks like I put blocks together just for the sake of doing it. You know what, that's exactly what I did. But after that, uh, I had uh, uh, the member of Bush play, and, and he had a few people watching, and they looked just like, what are these weird screens? And I said to myself, you know what, before I had people playing my game, maybe I should uh, actually start fixing it. So now I actually have as much detail put into my quest 
the um, time restraints you have given me. And, uh, and I still have the opportunity to continue putting the detail into my quest. Um, that is, so in other words, I, tr I would like, I would like to teach that from my experience and teach to example. So let's, uh, go in this door. Welcome to Kakariko Village. I am Jan of the Shadow Tribe. If you are looking for a temple, there is one on Death Mountain to the north. There is one in the graveyard here too. But uh, no one alive knows how to get inside. So, no one alive can get into the temple in the graveyard. And I'm going to assume that everybody who are dead are buried in the ground. Are the spirits given VIP access to the temple? That is fantastic! Take this prescription to the old woman next door. Now speaking of souls of wisdom, my friend, uh, she's right now actually playing. You might hear it in the background. My, you might hear some Zelda sounds, sound effects in the background. My friend is actually trying to be, uh, is actually playing my game right now and trying to beat the second dungeon. And now because I said that she's turning down the sound, how silly. Now, I'm very curious about this. Why did I pick up that potion automatically? I gave her a letter and I had no plan of it. Doesn't matter. I like your potions. But that purple potion, what does these potions do? Oh, magic potion. Perfect. Wait, am I even allowed to use magic yet? Clearly not. I don't even think I have a magic wear. I love the use of Zelda tunes in this game too. It's, it really hits home. Every, everything is a Zelda tune. Do you want to try your luck, kid? I so do, but I don't have the rupees to do so, so I will be back. I can add magic to your weapons. How do they talk without that noise? Because I would like to do that for the rest of my game. I hate that beeping noise. So maybe someone can uh, tell me how that's done. He talked and not a single sound was made. Either that or I'd like to change the sound effect. I'm si that has to be done for every quest in Zelda Classic Forever. Get rid of that annoying beep, 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 beep sound when someone's talking to you. That, is, that sound is absolutely insane. Or can drive a man to insanity. I I don't care that the heck. Oh, I clicked it. I heard a beep. I'm like, wait, why am I hearing like a coin beep? But that's just my friend playing uh, Souls of Wisdom over there. Click, it actually clicked me a little bit. I'm like, oh, I thought I actually found another secret. No, no. Let's uh, see what I can find out here. Better stay in safe zones for a second while I drink my beverage. <laughs> oh boy. I gotta stop drinking my. <laughs> Announce it today. Souls. I don't even. I, I gotta actually stop. Stop what I was gonna say just now before I even get to it out. Anyways, I think the last time I was playing this, my friend phoned a little while ago while I was like in that dark Kakariko town. So I'm gonna say that's night time. Because I can't, uh, I'm so surprised how dark Kakariko really is. And I think I kept going left. And now I'm getting the feeling that I should have went off because there's like these angry. Magic shooting octagons everywhere, which I'm going to show you right now. But then I'm going to go take my course back up where I think that I'm supposed to go. Okay, never mind. I, don't, I, I forget where the octagons is now. So I'm just going to go up. Maybe I. Maybe the angry octagons are out there. Boys! There's so many octagons in this game. Oh. Area is so foolish green. Crap, 
butterfly when you walk into a new area. Instead of having a scrolling warp, it's almost best just so you can get rid of that line effect, that obvious change of color. It's best to just turn the side warp into a a not scrolling warp, but an actual in exit entrance type warp. So the screen turns black and you go and the change in color is not too obvious. Though. Now the overworlds again. It's, uh, I'm seeing. I was about to say it's. I'm seeing the same things. It's, it's, everything is like looks like it's walled out. Like the rocks are walls, and the trees are just random placements on the screen. While octoroks inhabit this tree rock overworld, and I think I just made a circle. Yes, I did. Oh boy, that is so good. I uh, starting to understand this overworld a bit, so you could almost say comparing it to typical Zelda overworlds, it's almost like that temple overworld. You want to compare it to Orchid of Time, I can't say typical Zelda overworlds, but then again, you say temple, there's always something to the center. Hold on, I'm gonna help my friend. Okay, check it out. Oh yes, and this is where the angry actor rocks are. So I gotta, I gotta try to look around and see where I'm doing so I get some of the ground. I don't know. I think that's the lift. But yeah, as I was saying, that that's the center. So that could almost be, you could almost consider that high wall castle, or like in the uh, far period of time, you consider that like uh, what is it, Lan Lan Ranch by location. So yeah, I could just say that's the center of the world. Now. See, this is what I mean by detail. This actually, I'm gonna here's here's an example. In this game, this green here looks better than everything I've seen so far. So, if anything, it's almost like a good idea to use this green as a reference, as a beginning. It doesn't have like just a small details, like a little bit of grass, just these random things. So, but that screen there, I want to go back to that screen just to say this is the direction of these screens here. Okay, these, these screens are way too open, so I gotta go to the screen, and this is it. In other words, this goes to show that you know what to do, and this is what I th this is what I believe you should apply. You, this here shows that there was a, a little bit more level of thought put into it, and these are the types of screens you should be aiming for. And even in those plain, like, you know, like, all the worlds when you're like, what's my punk there? And you're like, giant trees and that, like, you can shape the overworld. And this is what I recommend. You want to shape it a little bit. And this is a good point of reference that I would recommend the author and the one helping me, which is now a triple man book uh, project to reference to. This screen to me. This screen. Uh, like, uh, for example, compare this screen to this screen. Even though the screen is bad, it's, it's like... Usually these types of screens, I want to have being able to just... Just when I just want to put in a filler screen. Now, it seems like I cannot continue this path. I probably want to need uh, a rock's feather of some sort. Now... I love these masked Doctor Rocks. They're they really want to invite me to their party. Go away. So I can't look here. Okay, this I think this video is probably going to be a little bit more than a half hour because I want to make some kind of progress to some place. Okay, so I know if I want to go down here, the shortcut down here. Let's just simply go right from Temple to the And these are... Ooh. See, and this is what, what I'm saying about the compliments, I could say. There is a, there's a lot of things in this quest that are really, just through a half hour plan, that I feel like that I could learn from. There's a lot of things I would love to learn how to do and implement in my quest. Now clearly I'm in an area that I should not be. This area seems too tough on me at this point. 
even though I could get Sherwood with a little bit of patience, as a natural gaming progression, uh, instinct, I just feel like that's just an area that I should probably look at a little later point of time. And if that's where I have to be, then I... Then, well, the ga game's difficulty has just... has just gone up so quickly more than I anticipated. Now, now here's something about bigger trees. But even still, the, 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 the bigger trees, there's no layering here. Uh, but then again, a layering is... it takes a while to be used to layering. But layering, uh, using layers, is a great way to turn these this perfect force into a more natural looking force. What I call perfect is the side by side by side force, or by trees. If I had lived on Earth and the world was designed like that, I would have said, wow, now we actually do have a good God. <laughs> we, we don't have this random, we, do, we don't have this random meteor God that wants life to be so confusing like this one. So, we have this perfect straight universe that I almost want to live in this universe now. But, because it, but it doesn't feel natural, and, and again. So yes, I, I have to say, I probably referenced this like a billion times. The overworld layout is, will still be my number one complaint. And again, the positivity is, is, again, it, it's the it's the use of really good techniques that I haven't really the, like. You want to make a quest when you know your when the things that are included in your quest, other people wants to try in their quest. And I've seen a lot of things in this quest that I would love to implement in my own. And that's a big. In other words, that's thinking outside of the box. That's saying, hey, I don't want to just use what the game gives me, so I say there's a lot of scripting done. So, okay, so the, so to use the scripts, to use the scripts and, and actually, actually pump the effort to say, hey, because a lot of people find scripts intimidating. They do. Uh, it took me, I, I created my first real big game, Social Wisdom 1, without any scripts whatsoever. Nor freeform combos. Layers, yes, I use layers. But to use the scripts in this game is is a good start to say, hey, my project is something different. That's so when you want to communicate that you have something different here, your use of scripts communicates just that. And that's a thumbs up from me. But the overworld design definitely in uh, in our uh, desperation of my voice, the overworld design needs work. But that's fine because it, it, that's how all the learning pulses of building the quest. So yeah, I still haven't found a temple, and uh, I would like to. Uh, Light and magic. I know uh, this. I know it's not on screen right now. Okay. I'm not quite able to figure out where I got to go. Perhaps everything I gotta do has to do with this boomerang. This I don't know. But it seems like right now that I'm a little bit stuck. It's too bad because I did want to see what the first dungeon's like. That may be something that I will have to leave for another time. That's too bad. Because I really did want to see a dungeon. Wait a second. Let's, I just realized something. Look at my position on the map. I'm right here. And when I go right... That is fairly misleading, but also, if I just take this the way the overworld was built as well, as well I think it's built into sections. Yeah, it, it definitely is built into sections.
Oh, I know that's. I just noticed that that's the first time. See, that's another thing. That's creepy and cool. Look at these eyes. Look at it. I don't know if this is naturally off with the graphics back, but anyways, this temple clearly wants to see me. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, yeah, I think I'm gonna end it right here, and uh, and I. Uh, yeah, I'm going to end right here with a staring contest between me and the temple for 20 seconds of complete silence and solitude. Okay, perfect. Now that 20 seconds are done, <laughs> why, uh, why the hell did I ever thought of doing that? Anyways, now that 20 seconds are done, I feel like I'm going to end this video, so everybody have a good day. And during your time playing this game, I hope that you enjoy your 20 seconds of staring at a temple as well. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.